Hello, Matt Oswalt here once again with a Keeping It Classless Lab video. Uh, this is going to be another video on Cisco ACI, and this time we're going to be exploring the NX API, which is the uh, name for the XML and JSON API found embedded within uh, Cisco's Nexus 9000 series switches. So uh, this is going to be relatively short. Uh, as you can imagine, there's quite a few things you can do with an API, and it would be foolish to try to do all of them. Uh, what we're going to focus on is how to get the API set up uh, and, and, and basically accepting accepting commands, um, and uh, also an introduction to the NX API sandbox. Um, now, I will be writing a post specifically on how to consume this uh, API within uh, Python context. So if you wanted to run a script outside of the switch, maybe on your laptop, maybe on a server, uh, that post will definitely go into detail there. Uh, just simply because of the fact that I can embed code and it makes it easy for you guys to copy and paste and things of that nature. This video is going to be a little more interactive than that, and, and as a result, we're not going to go into the, the specific implementation of Python, but what we will go into is how to get it set up and uh, a few of the tools that Cisco's provided to us by default to allow us to just get our feet wet, especially if you're new to the concept of an API and how it works. Uh, so the first step is, and, and I and in the previous video I had, uh, I have two 9508 modular switches, uh, Nexus 9000 9508 modular switches, and uh, we're really just going to play with this one since the ex it's it's not really meant to be an exploration of the topology. It's meant to uh, sh basically show the show the service that the API runs on top of. So uh, it's a very simple matter of uh, going into configure mode and running feature. NX API. The feature is now enabled and we should be able to access the web page of this switch if we were to navigate to the switch uh, at 10.2.1.8. And here we are. So this is the NX API sandbox. Now, if you're new to programmability, new to running code or XML or JSON, this is going to be your best friend because really what this is meant to do is simulate those API calls uh, without you having to write any code. So when when I first got into you know programmability and figuring out how I can automate certain network tasks or server tasks or whatever, one of the difficulties behind getting into that, if you're if you're new to it entirely, is building the structure of it, right? So, you know, if you're consuming an API, not only do you have to know how the device that that API is configuring works, but you also have to know how to consume that API and serialize the XML or JSON onto the network uh, in order to just call it in, in general. And that's a lot of work, and it can take some time. What this sandbox allows us to do is form our XML very, very quickly. Um, we don't need to write our own XML client. It's simply provided to us here. So if we're trying to figure out how to do something, we, maybe we don't have any working code to, to test with, we can go into this sandbox and, ch and change these dropdowns uh, and text fields to match exactly uh, what, we, what we're aimed, uh, what we're trying to do. Um, and that allows us to get the output that we want very quickly. Once we've tested it, we know that it works. Then we can try to basically reproduce that in, in code. It really just makes that, uh, makes that API call, figuring out what you want to do with it, it makes it that much more easy and, 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 uh, and much, more, much more quick. Uh, so a brief overview of this sandbox. Um, it's worth mentioning that there is some quick help down here. Uh, if you if you get lost, a few typos. Um, there's uh, there's also if you were to click on documentation, uh, it'll take you over to this uh, awesome built-in documentation page. Kind of helps you helps you ex helps explain what what's used here. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's an explanation for all of these request elements, and this is very important uh, to understand because this is what really makes or breaks your API calls. Um, so we're going to go back to the sandbox, and uh, as the documentation states, and I believe it's in the programmability guide as well, um, there's, uh, there's a brief explanation of all of this stuff, but I'll just show you kind of what, what each option does. So CLI show um, is pretty simple. It allows us to do show commands. Let's just do like show IP route. Right, so it sends this command to the switch. 
And what it's done is it's formed all of this XML here, sent it for us as a request, and it sent it to uh, the switch, and the switch returned XML uh, of its own. Now, normally, uh, if, you, if you've seen, for instance, the, the way that the ASA, the firewall uh, that Cisco makes, the uh, ASA, um, it does XML API calls to a degree, but it's really not that great because all it does is it embeds both the input and the output directly in um, a single tag. So, for instance, um, we can see that there's a dedicated field in this XML output that tells us this is an IPv4 route. Here is the prefix for this route. Um, you know, here is, uh, uh, it, apparently this is a directly attached route, so it lets us know that that's true, um, and so on and so forth. The next hop for this route is, is this IP address, and it's all very hierarchical and pre-parsed for us. It doesn't, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to write an application or a, or a function that, that basically cuts through the output of what we've usually seen, which is, which is what, what really our only option was in the past. Um, I'm going to go to the next type to just really elaborate on that point. If I were to change it to show ASCII, it does exactly what the ASA and I think a few other devices do. And it simply takes the output uh, of what we uh, normally see if we were to in, be in the command line, and it just pastes it, pastes it verbatim uh, into this body uh, output. And now this is okay, you know, this isn't, this isn't necessarily unusable, it's just very difficult to, uh, it, it, it's difficult and time consuming to write uh, parsing functions to go through and, you know, cut out all this extra crap, this isn't stuff we need, we really only want, you know, the prefix, we want to know the metric and the uh, administrative distance, things like that, we don't want to have to do that parsing. If we were to use this option up here, it would do all that parsing for us. So something to think about. Uh, now, these next two options, uh, I, I'm probably almost never going to use. I can't imagine when I would use them. Um, of course, I've been using this API for all of two days, so who's to say? Um, in, in short, uh, if you were to set chunk, this is a binary value, it's 0 and 1. Uh, if you were to set it to 1, what it would do is it would chunk the output um, for, for things like if you were to do like a show, uh, like a show tech, for instance, uh, and get the tech support files. Um, tech support output for this switch, you would definitely want to chunk it so that it doesn't send it all in one, basically in one big stream. Um, sort of a way of making the output uh, capture more efficient, something like that. Uh, now, the session ID is actually, I believe, if you look at the documentation, it's only used if you do use chunking. Yeah, only valid when response message is chunked. Um, so it basically allows you to say, yeah, I want the I want the next chunk of output from the old session that I just basically initiated. Input's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, this command is sent directly to the switch. So if we wanted to do uh, any any command, and I've tried I've tried quite a few with this API, any command that you want to send uh, in terms of like a show, I believe that's what you have to use here. Uh, then it does it there. Um, and I believe that this is probably not, uh, I, they say CLI show, but I'm guessing um, that, that it applies to anything in, in privileged mode, frankly. Um, the reason being is there's a third option here, CLI conf. If you wanted to make changes, then you would select that option. So let's try that. Um, we'll do, uh, let's just uh, insert a dummy route, uh, IP route. Uh, 9.0.0.0, .0 and this is not production, otherwise this would really bork up some internet traffic. Um, this is a totally dedicated network, uh, or isolated network rather, so no big deal in doing this. Um, let's just say that, and cool. So it basically just gives us a success message, and that's fine. We don't really need much else than that, other than that the, uh, that the IP route command was a successful uh, run now. Of course, we, it would be it would be better if we were to go back and verify that it's been uh, entered. We do a show IP route, and if we scroll down, now this is again. If you're doing this programmatically, you would be basically iterating through all of these row prefix um, nodes, and then you know basically forming forming your tables or whatever you want to call it, uh, your your programmatic constructs um, accordingly. Um, and if we scroll down, scroll. Uh, did I miss it? No, that's interesting. I wonder why it's not showing up. Hmm. Now that is interesting, isn't it? So, let's see. Uh, uh, no. No, it made it in. 
Uh, oh well, silly me. The next hop isn't even uh, isn't even a valid uh, address. So uh, let's let's actually be a little more intelligent about this. Um, let's go back to our sandbox. Um, if we were to actually use, let's say, um, we have you know what? Let's say, uh, let's just use this next hop because we can. Uh, let's go back to CLIConf uh, IP route. 9.0.0.0, oops, helps to type 0, 8, and then we'll, we'll use, uh, we'll use this guy, because that's an actual next hop. Yeah, the, the, uh, the subnet, I just threw out a dummy next hop, and that was stupid. The, it, the next hop should be in, in a directly connected subnet, otherwise it won't populate the routing table. Sort of routing 101. Uh, oh, sorry. That's the other side. There we go. Okay, finally. Now we can go CLI show, and we do our show IP route. Now if we scroll down, actually it's on the top. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. So now we can see that it's there. Um, one thing I'd also like to call out is there's the NCMA logo uh, built in, which is kind of cool. It's kind of hard to see. Um, hopefully that shows up in the video, but that's the little mini NCMA logo. Uh, okay, so what we've what we've explored is really just how to do some simple post requests with the X, uh, NX API. It would be pretty trivial at this point, now that we know what format we want, to download a snippet of code that basically forms our XML for us. Um, and as I will go into in my post, Cisco has actually already done a lot of that work for us by creating Python scripts that uh, are that are aimed at sending just some XML snippet to the to the to the switch. Now the XML that we send is completely up to us, of course, since we have access to the source code, we can then feed that snippet or function into our own Python application or or something else and uh, do our own API calls. So that will be uh, that will be in the in the blog post. Uh, I'll probably put a, I'll put a link to the to the blog post in this video or at least I'll try to uh, and this video will like be embedded in that post. Um, now, one thing before I leave you, uh, and is and that is, uh, you can format uh, XML or JSON uh, output. Now, I have not had good luck with this thus far. Um, when I do a post here, I don't, and I, I haven't finished reading the documentation, so it could just be uh, could just be me. But uh, I have not yet gotten this JSON uh, request to return. So uh, I'll, I'll be continuing to explore that. I will also mention that it appears that, that XML is the preference from, from, an, from an API perspective uh, from Cisco. Uh, and the reason I say that is because little, little things like um, uh, JSON, is, uh, JSON is, is not supported if you are doing chunking. So if you wanted to return a, lot of, uh, a large amount of output, you would want to chunk it up so that you could receive it in, in, in little pieces. Um, JSON is is just not simply won't work uh, when when that uh, is enabled, and I believe there were a few other things that uh, where, where JSON wasn't enabled. Um, so re feel free to read the documentation. I think the, all the caveats are, are in there. Um, just I, I'm probably when I when I'm writing scripts for this, I'll probably be doing nothing but XML just to avoid any weird incompatibilities. Um, I'm trying to you know I'm trying to to keep in to keep in uh, in the in in the mainstream so to speak so I don't have to rewrite applications down the road um, kind of sucks because JSON's pretty cool but you know the, the transport really isn't nearly as important as just having the open programmability like what we've seen here um, this is definitely a step in the right direction from uh, Cisco's perspective and last but certainly not least I'm going to tease the next video a little bit there is a fourth option on type and that is bash so as you can as you can imagine, um, having access to the Bash shell for Linux uh, on this switch is pretty powerful. So we can actually use the API built into the switch to directly access the Bash shell instead of you know basically uh, enabling some service on the Bash shell to 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 make itself accessible. That way we can only that way we write to a common API. We don't have to split up our program programmability options. It's all very simplified. Um, I'm going to be including this. Uh, basically API calls that include bash commands uh, in a future video and post because um, there's quite a few things that you can do with with uh, with access to the bash shell itself that go beyond just high level APIs and you know running Cisco CLI commands uh, within XML there's actually a lot more that you can do uh, with that as you can imagine uh, so 
With that, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Uh, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Mirdin, M-I-E-R-D-I-N, or at keepingaclassless.net. Feel free to leave a comment on this video, uh, on my blog, or on Twitter, and let me know what other things you'd like me to look at. I will be I will be delving into as many subjects as I can with uh, both the Nexus 9000 line and then Cisco ACI as, as a solution like the APIC uh, much later, obviously, when it comes out. Uh, so feel free to leave me a comment on any of these mediums and let me know what you think and let me know what you'd like me to go into and I'll be happy to do it. Thanks.